once again, we are glad to share with you on this program, um, Church of a Nazarene Family Forum. With me, I have Reverend Kelman. I am Reverend Furley. And um, surely we have about 33 churches across the island. And uh, we recognize the significance of family life. And we recognize also there are many pressing issues in our society. And we believe that many of these issues have their genesis in the family. That's the reason why we decide to share with you on the area of family. So this evening, we want to focus on how to build healthy families. And I'm hoping that you can invite a friend along to share with us. We'll be back in a few minutes. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Welcome back. So we continue then to share with you how to build healthy families. Reverend Kelman, you want to? Yes, sir. Well, last, last, uh, last time we, we began to look at some of the marks of, of a healthy family, and we would have been able to uh, discuss two or three of them, but I, I want to start with the whole idea of, of spending time together. I think that uh, that's, one, that's one we raised last time, and one which is so critical um, to building healthy families uh, quality time. And I know that persons would say to me that, you know, there's so much to do to be done. Uh, persons are busy. And, um, I, and so, you know, fair time for the family uh, becomes almost, you know, um, a negotiable. Uh, but I want to, I want to suggest that um, quality time must be an imperative for every family if they want to build, uh, build strong, a strong connection. Mm -hmm. Because unless we are in the same space and we spend time together, then chances are we're not going to fully understand and engage one another. And, and well, it doesn't necessarily have to be at a restaurant, you know, having dinner or lunch, or it can be just simply sitting together and having a conversation, um, playing a game even, you know, um, uh, reading the car and talking. I know uh, many families have two cars these days, mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things which um, I did and in the early of our family is that during vacation, especially long vacation, when um, the children were not in school, we would, we would just drive one car, mm -hmm. you know, as a way to kind of mm -hmm. connect with each other. It makes sense. You know, um, you know on the Because way. obviously during the week, so, you, so, you're so, separate. Right. So quality mm -hmm. time uh, has to do with, you know, being intentional mm -hmm. and, uh, and finding a, and carving out space mm -hmm. um, for, that, for that kind of engagement with, with, with the family. And let me say, though, uh, Robert Farley, I, I mentioned it in passing about it being about the intentionality of quality time. And in the same way that we establish our working hours and uh, things revolve around, around those. Then in a similar fashion, we should make family time a priority and uh, uh, revolve other activities around that, that quality time that we Well, have. some people yes. don't see it that way. We live in, in a time where we're extremely busy. And in fact, extreme busyness is really one of the enemies of the family. Um, there are those who will say, well, I'm busy preparing for the family, I'm busy making money that I can take care of the family, you know, but, but the balance is critical. Yeah. And also, families are, families are dynamic, mm -hmm. you know, um, they change over time, you know, needs change, mm -hmm. um, realities change, and sometimes, and here persons talk about growing apart, mm -hmm. right, they grow apart because um, they were unaware of the changes that were occurring, mm -hmm. and because of infrequent connections, yes. then persons begin to move in different directions. So, well, I think that is critical because what we have to do is to seize the moment. Mm -hmm. We go through seasons mm -hmm. when you have your toddler. Mm -hmm. That toddler will soon be eight and nine mm -hmm. and ten, and then you have their preteens, and then their teens, and then they, you know, mm -hmm. then perhaps it's difficult to even get family. Meetings or sessions when they're with teenagers, they That's have right. their own agenda. That's right. So we have to seize the moment in the different seasons mm -hmm. of our life. And, and I think too that this all um, 
goes back to what we said in our first program about establishing a structure mm -hmm. um, for the family. You know, um, things rise and fall on structure. Mm -hmm. And one of the elements I believe that healthy families should insist on is having time together. And that should be a part and guard it. of the family structure. Guard it as well. And like you said, and, and, and you know, carve it out. You know, when I was a, when I was a, a, a uh, well, I was younger, you know, um, <laughs> my parents would, would plant a little ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, what they would do is that they would get a, a, a mesh ware and put over it mm -hmm. so that the, the birds and the chickens don't, don't pick it out, mm -hmm. you know, and destroy the ceiling. I think in the same way, we've got to ring fence our families in yes. our quality time. Yes, yes. So that other things are not... But the, the, problem, the problem is, though, uh, Reverend Kamen, as you would know, especially we as ministers, that's something that we have to deal with ourselves. Yes. Because... When a parishioner calls, it may be our off day. Yes. So how do you negotiate that? Yeah, well, or I maybe mean, it's a day that you had intended to spend with your family yes, or with your wife yes. or the children. Yeah. How do you how do you navigate that as a minister? I, I think that's 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 a, a work in progress. I, I must confess <laughs> that I've not been able to find uh, you know the, 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 the answer to that question. Yes. But what I what I would say though is that uh, there will be times when when that becomes disrupted, mm -hmm. okay? But, but all time, but, yes, but it but, can't be every time. That's right, but yes. the issue is always getting back to it. Yes. Right? I, I tell persons, yes. Yes. Um, the challenge sometimes is not so much the acute disruption, it's when it becomes not important. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> we didn't do it today, yeah. uh, next week, so we, have to, we don't do it next week either, yes. and then we just forget about it, yes. you know? It fades away. Um, the thing about it is that yes, there'll be those disruptions, mm -hmm. But then we come back to it, you yes. know, uh, at some point in time. Yeah. Another, you know? another area of significance in terms of building a family, you have to pay attention to communication. Mm -hmm. um, you want to zero into that one? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, just as there is the element of, of structure and quality time, um, then the issue of communication becomes, becomes, becomes very important, very critical, because, I mean, I only know what you're thinking mm -hmm. when you share with me. I cannot, I cannot engage you, I cannot uh, respond to you, I cannot, you know, uh, make the adjustment that you may require unless I understand it. Mm -hmm. And so communication is about being able to understand each other, you know, what, what, what is being said, um, maybe what is being inferred, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's about being able to, to understand the heart of, of, your, of the other members in, in, your, in, in, your, in your family so you can make the necessary adjustments as you respond to their to the need. Sometimes not only what is being said, as you said, what's being inferred, yes. when you can sense persons may be going through a situation and you are able to pick up, yes. and especially as it relates to parents and, and children, be able to identify what's going on. And, and, and the family <coughs> should, be, should be a space where uh, persons are able to, to speak freely, though, mm -hmm. Hello, Farley. Um, How do you get to that place? where we can be safe to say what we need to say. I, I think that, that has, that's, that's, a work, offense. that's a work in progress. Yes. And but there's some basic ground rule. Yes, and I think also that we need to, to set things up in such a way that we create that element where mm -hmm. uh, persons can be vulnerable yes. and, and, and still feel that, that they're okay. Yes. You know, you know, I, I, I normally say that the family is the, is the opposite of, of, our, of, of our social engagement because uh, we go to work and we are judged based on our performance, mm -hmm. productivity. You know um, how well we are, how well we are, we are responding to what the, the boss says or whatever we desire for us. But family should be a bit different. It should be based on any kind of performance. Um, the mention should be based on who we are as persons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the family should be a place where I can share my deepest fears. If no way else, my deepest hurts. If no place you know, else, the family should be that. Yes. Uh, my insecurities, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And, and understand that in that context, I will not be judged or looked down or criticized, uh, but I'll be, I'll be affirmed. But mm -hmm. the affirmation again, yes, yes. you know, and I feel that sense that, that there's who, there those who are supporting me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and helping me to, to grow. I, I think, though, that that is a work in progress. Yes. It, it has to be a case where. Um, children don't feel threatened. That's right. They can share with mommy how they feel. Yes. They can, of course, not only what is going on in your home, but let's say what's going on in school. Yes. Can they come and say what happened today? If something happened that they thought I was out of place, yes. can they share? That's right. Um, and not, not only that, 
as parents, parents, as it relates to power, because mm -hmm. because parents, in terms of the children, mm -hmm. have the power. The power is to empower, mm -hmm. and not to abuse, mm -hmm. or not to um, give the impression I'm in charge here. That's right. Power to love. Power to forgive. Yes. Power to shape. Power to guide. Power to release. Yes. As and, a child gets younger. Yeah, and, and, and I must, I must also say to you, Dora, for all that. That the times when it's important to also enforce boundaries as well. Well, of course, of course. Right? Um, because in some families, you have situations where you can't tell the parent from the child. Right. I've seen situations like that. Right. You have, you have to be balanced. Yes. There has to be a balance yes. there. Mm -hmm. And I guess mm -hmm. uh, a part of that balance will be, will be determined by the age of the child. Because mm -hmm. if, if a, a, a child who's, at, let's say, 20 years old, uh, you still have to tell a child everything, then mm -hmm. as a parent, you'll fail. You know? mm -hmm. yes. um, if you do not change your your style in terms of your mode of how communication, you engage and collaborate yes. Yes. with that child as, as he or she gets older, mm -hmm. uh, there's something is definitely wrong with that whole mm -hmm. uh, period process. So, so, so I think balance is the key, yes. and there has to be a clear um, case of, of boundaries, but also uh, a willingness to engage and to and to adjust if if necessary. Yes. yes. Okay, additionally, I know that communication is a broad area. That's right. Of course, it kind of overlaps mm -hmm. many of the areas, but another area of significance um, is building family tradition. Yes. You want to yeah, say that's, that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's me. How critical, how important is that? Yeah, well, that creates For that. family rituals and so on. Yes. We're it, talking about yes. building strong families. Yes. How, how important is that? Well, it, it does create a whole set of memories, mm -hmm. yes. right? And it uh, also, isn't that important? That's very important, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Even in terms of, of of loss, you know, and they know, I don't know, don't necessarily get this yet because we are going to address that don't don't uh, at a, a future program. But but those 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 memories, um, mm -hmm. oftentimes you know, help me through the issue of, of loss and, and death. Yes. We can reflect on oh, yes. on the good times and laugh. Become and, treasures. Yeah, and and, and and you're able then to, mm -hmm. to to feel a sense of the person's continued presence, not yes. not in any. Any, any strange way, way. Sure, right? Sure. But uh, in terms of uh, being able to engage it, because because one of the things about loss and you know is that it is not about forgetting the person; it's really about moving the person from your physical world mm -hmm. into emotional world. And the more memories you have, mm -hmm. uh, the better you're able to, to to do that. But I want to go back though to, to the whole issue you mentioned of, of, of rituals, and I talked about the whole element of memories, but also it provides. Um, opportunity for connection mm -hmm. and for connection that is planned yes uh, and so it, it helps to be it helps it in terms of, of of the entire family coming together around these set times and knowing that these times are so 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 dear to you mm -hmm. and, you, and you prepare for them basically. an example Sunday lunch. Sunday lunch, yes, yeah. yes. And there may be some seasonal traditions, yes, like yes. Christmas time, yes, you yes. know. So, um, uh, so some families have a tradition where they go driving on weekends. At least one one mm -hmm. meal every day they eat together. Yes. Uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some families have a, have a tradition whereby maybe one night a week or so they spend uh, playing games, games. or and yes. every month they do something together. Mm -hmm. um, I think those, those are those are critical. Yes. Because when once your children have grown, there are memories that they can reflect on, as you yes. have said. Yes. And I think most of the time we wait for things to happen. Mm -hmm. well, what is critical that uh, we can create memories. That's right. We can create memories. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm really big on on, on tradition, on, on family traditions, and I, even I extend that to, to to church traditions as well. Yeah. Things that are, mm -hmm. are uniquely, you know. Mm -hmm. So 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 those we, those we not being enslaved to them. No no no. <laughs> but those moments offer you uh, wonderful opportunities mm -hmm. um, to, for quality time and uh, for connection as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, very right, interesting, Reverend Kelman. Well, we'll be back in a minute. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, we'll be back with you again, and I think we shared the on some very essential elements in terms of uh, building strong families. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's one that I would want us to kind of um, talk about a little bit. Take a little deeper. And yes. that is the emotional <coughs> connection. Mm -hmm. And with this whole um, new wave of 
of emotional intelligence discussions and uh, the, the acquire of, of those competencies, those skills, um, usually for the work, workplace, I believe that even in terms of family, um, those skills are very important as well. How, how can we, I know it sounds technical, but in, in simple terms, when we talk about emotional intelligence as it relates to family, yes. how we cope with anger, when it occurs. How, how, how we manage emotions. We manage, how, period. How, yeah, how we make our emotions yes. a, mm -hmm. a, a source and a, and a space for... Communicating. For, for connection. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. um, I think that's really what it was about. You know? I think, I think it's, it's be able to value um, the whole element of difference one, mm -hmm. but also uh, being able to to understand that it is okay to feel. Yes. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the essential element here. And then to share how you feel. And show how you feel mm -hmm. and, and to acknowledge, mm -hmm. you know, and, and though you don't <coughs> necessarily not agree, you, you acknowledge this how uh, your, your daughter feels, your son feels, this is how your, your wife feels, as how you feel. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about it. Let's see where that feeling is coming mm -hmm. from. So whether it's a positive emotion or it's a negative one, you know, um, Reverend Kelman, this is a key because, as you know, sometimes, in, let's say, in, in preparing persons for marriage and so on, you always have the idea, hear the argument, well, men don't have emotions. And, um, and that becomes a challenge because, well, is it because we don't express ourselves? Yeah. It te the ladies tend to be more expressive than we are. Yeah, the issue though is, is understand the gender. Oh, that, is that overstated? I, I think in some cases, it is about not being aware, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and yes, uh, men were. But what about things. what about awareness? But you're not able to put it into words. Yeah. Well, well, I, I think I think <coughs> we, we men have been sold a philosophy that says that men are the strong silent type. I think that's changing though, in large measure. Aren't we? And, and, um, Aren't and, we? Um, and, and so, <laughs> I just want that question. And so, we always believe that we don't have the right to cry. Or the luxury to express ourselves. Especially cry. Um, and and, and mm -hmm. Israel Price pushing this one, right? <laughs> in terms of how, but, but, how, but, how but this, real you know? men can and, cry. And, right? And, and, and I, I think it's, it's a settled um, yes. issue that needs to be broken down. Yes. And, yes. Um, how we've but, been shaped by our. Right. Society, but I, I still want to suggest though mm -hmm. that you cannot really expect that that a male will, will be like a female. Well, I agree with that, right? And, uh, and I agree so, with that. and so, even though um, the element of being emotive and mm -hmm. being able to share emotions, mm -hmm. uh, it's you have to be able to to learn and 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 to, and, to, and to do. I still think we need to understand that, given uh, the, the the nature of the female, we're not stereotyping here, mm -hmm. just acknowledging. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, they, they, they tend to be a lot more emotional than we are. Yes. Um, but that does not mean we can express how we feel. But sometimes, Reverend Kelman, as, as men, and I'm a man myself, I'm not, I'm not being hard on men, but this program is a program where we learn and improve. Uh, when we find it difficult, let's say, to talk to our daughter or to our son yeah. when they're going through issues, yeah. why should we have to say, go to mommy, yeah. when it comes to what we consider a touch of sensitive issue? Yeah. So we, as men, be able to talk to our daughters or our sons? I'm not saying they're not family issues that you can say go to mommy, but mm -hmm. we should be able to carry on our conversation with our, our children. Um, yeah, it, I, because what you're doing, you're shaping them. Yes. And, and even if you, can, <coughs> if you feel uncomfortable doing it, as mm -hmm. we can do it together. Well, of course. As a, as of a, course. As a couple. Yes. But yes, you have, I agree with you that we should be able, as, as males in, in, in the family, mm -hmm. um, to... To, to address even those issues that may seem sensitive. Yes, we know yes. there are certain topics that that probably uh, we can relate to better. Well, of course. Girls. Yes. Um, but I think that... Um, I'm talking about emotive as, as, as males, issues. We, we should be able to... Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, can, we can learn to do it. Though. That's, but that's, that's the important the, point you want to that's make. The, that's the critical if, point. If that's not how we were brought up, right. we can learn to do it. Right. And, and, and the, whole, the whole field of emotional intelligence in its broadest context mm -hmm. is really about that. Yes. So how can persons be taught Mm -hmm. uh, to, be, to be able to, to acquire and to, and to manifest mm -hmm. uh, these different emotions. Because problems. what it does, is to, it makes the relationship richer yes. and deeper and go beyond simply talking about the mundane things. Right. Um, connecting the heart. Yes. And that's what we have to connect with heart issues. Yes. All right, you want to move on to another one? Well, modeling, well, what about modeling yes, roles? Yes, so, mm -hmm. so until the emotional connection we mentioned just now, and mm -hmm. then the issue of, of modeling, modeling appropriate. Roles and 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 for, for the family, and I think mm -hmm. that that 
that that uh, last one is is very very uh, very important with reference to um, you know uh, manifesting that which you want to become a part of the family. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mentioned in, in one of the earlier programs that that behavior and values are, are caught rather than taught, mm -hmm. and one of the things that is in, that is important for building a a very strong and healthy family is that the parents so again. Uh, from the from the, the, the executives of the, of, the, of the family, they're the ones who set the rules. Mm -hmm. That they themselves are are, are are individuals that follow those rules as well. Yes. And model that behavior. Yes. You know, we've we've always we came up and hearing persons say, "Do as I say, say and not as I do." Yeah. Um, but truthfully, we have to be able to demonstrate to our our children. Um, what what are what are behaviors that are yeah. that are okay? And, and we're even human. when even even when they're not seeing us. I mean, I, I'm a very, I'm a human though. Yes. And I think we, we, we make mistakes. Well, too, of course, of course. Right? And if, you, if you're part of that, really, mm -hmm. it's to say to your children, you know, we're not yes, perfect. It's, yes, it's not about yes, perfection. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I, I I did I messed that one up. You know, yes. Um, yes. I I didn't hear you. You know, I I, mm -hmm. I was too hasty. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes. Right, and um, and and I think that that's that's a crucial mm -hmm. uh, factor, though. This whole this whole, this whole um, idea of building strong families that even yes. as a parent, uh, they should be should have the the freedom uh, and the humility to say yes. to, to your children, yes. you know, I messed up. You know, yes. I'm I sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, and forgive me. Yes, and practice forgiveness yes. because this is the whole idea of we're modeling behavior. Yes. And of course, we mentioned earlier on the whole idea of values, but values come from beliefs. Right. And it goes back then to the whole importance of a strong grounding. Yes. Uh, we mentioned that earlier on of what we call Sunday school, what we call nurturing the children. Of course, the church can help us nurture our children. And, we don't and, have to do it all alone. And even in the context of authority of, of, of fatherhood, mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you talk about God as father, mm -hmm. you know, how, how do children hear that and understand that? How do, how do you interpret that as, yes. a, as an adult, I mean, uh, because the, the screen through which you look mm -hmm. is that of your, your own of, father. Your, your own father. Exactly. Right? So Critical. How we, so how we, how we engage our children mm -hmm. sets them up even for their relationship with God. Exactly. And for either either a, a good, strong relationship mm -hmm. or maybe a faulty relationship that they have to know, right. uh, spend time and effort in reshaping because mm -hmm. uh, their experience of father was not very positive. If it's one, one who abandons, yes. one who abuses, yes. it's difficult yes. to translate the, a caring, compassionate father. And, and that's very significant, though, because, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm, I can only speak for our context. I find that that the whole the whole idea of fatherhood is something that is grossly uh, misunderstood and misinterpreted. Uh, but at least in the, in the evangelical, mm -hmm. um, you know, segment of, of, of our of our church, you know, um, and and oftentimes, you know, the fatherhood of God is is closely allied. To punishment by, by God, and um, and, and so again, uh, uh, we need to be to, to be to be to be cognizant of that. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful with how we teach. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, these are some areas of critical significance, and this viewers, we trust that um, we we'll, as we continue delving into these important areas of family life, uh, Reverend. Kelman spoke just now about fatherhood. That's one of the areas that we're going to concentrate on as well as we share in these programs, motherhood, um, fatherhood. Um, a number of issues relating to family life. And uh, I'm afraid that there's one though that mm -hmm. I, I thought we, we, we may want to mm -hmm. kind of speak to, and that is the whole issue of, of family worship though. Yes. And, um, I, and you being my senior that you Mm -hmm. uh, talk, uh, that's well, as we as we conclude, this is an important one to conclude on, making time for family worship. I mean, at, in the fact, at home, and what some people sometimes what they do, they will use like the Sunday um, sermon when they come home and just share, give the children a chance to share what transpired at church. But more than that, I think that um, families should make time to have devotions. Um, fellowship with their children and so on. I find that as the children get older, the children can also be responsible for leading, leading um, these family family times. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a struggle sometimes, but yes. I, I think that 
Uh, the old adage holds true that mm -hmm. the family that, that prays together stays yes, together. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I tell persons that I've never seen a family that is growing in their love for God and and, uh, and, and, and the other side of the word, mm -hmm. uh, fragment, you know, yes. um, because the love for God should, should eventuate mm -hmm. in love for others, yes. and others including everyone, everyone. in, in mm -hmm. the context of your family. Yes. I think I, I've always said, if it can't necessarily every day, choose like once a week, twice a week, we'll get together with the children, because there are times where uh, adult devotion is critical. But if you have twice or uh, once a week where you get together with the children, depending on the ages, that's very critical. Yes. Again, your modeling behavior. Well, listeners and viewers, of course, we are at the end of today's program. It can go so quickly. Well, we will join you next week. Um, our focus next program will be the impact of COVID-19 on the family. I trust you invite a friend or a member of the family of the family to join us as we will share. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being in a miss even as we speak on this very critical, sensitive area of family life. Help us to be able to translate these ideas into practice. We thank you, Lord, for Christ's sake. Amen.